Well, hello. A month or so ago, I bought myself a kit to build a Clasmata from Rebel Technology um, via Thonk. I built it. Uh, I looked for videos to show me how to use it, and I didn't find a lot that was terribly informative. Uh, everything I found seemed to me to be rather confusing. It may be my density, or it may be just that nobody's quite got round to explaining it. Certainly not explaining it to a degree that I could understand particularly well. I took the time yesterday to actually work out how the bloody thing works, and I thought it might be nice to share that. We've got five knobs coming into Clasmata, and really we're going to concentrate on two of them at the moment. The two at the bottom here are involved in voltage control. Um, this one we'll talk about later, but we'll stick it in the middle now just to make life simple. Um, but these are the two we're going to look at first. What the Clasmata is, is a Euclidean sequencer. It takes bars, effectively, which can be anything from one note to 32 notes long, a bar or a sequence, and it puts on beats into that sequence. And it spreads those on beats in a rational manner, as best it can, to fill the gaps. But when you start trying to put odd numbers of beats into even spaces, you get rhythms that are interesting. And there's a whole paper which you can get hold of on the web, um, which explains the maths of it and explains the fact that it seems to, that many of these beats that it comes up with seem to reflect beats in various sorts of musical traditions. I've got a low frequency oscillator coming in at the bottom here, coming into the input of the Clasmata, and we should be able to hear that here. A higher pitched beat there coming through, showing what note's coming in. This is setting the bar length, and at the moment, I think the bar length is set to eight. So we listen to what's coming out of there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we've got the bar length here set to eight beats, and we've got this control set to the very bottom. This is the fill control. And when it's set to the very bottom here, we're getting one beat out of every eight playing. This control goes from one round to 100%. So from one beat to a, to a bar to all the beats in a bar. This one goes from one beat bar up to a 32 beat bar. We'll leave that on eight for the moment and we'll turn this to the middle and show that we get what we kind of expect to get, which is when we've got four beats playing out of every eight, we've got an on off. We're just halving the beats there. It becomes more interesting when we put five beats out of eight, and then you can hear we've got a rhythm that's got some interest to it. Because we're trying to fit five beats, five on beats into an eight beat bar, so we get something more interesting. Then we've got six beats, and then when we get up to the top, we get eight beats to the bar, which becomes boring again. So either end of this control, tends to have very little interest. We've either got one beat per bar. In the middle, it's not much interest because we've got just four, four out of eight. And at the top, we've got eight out of eight. The interest comes in this sort of sweet zone, either here or here, where we put maybe three notes into a, an eight beat bar, or five or seven beats into an eight beat bar. So we should get to a point here with seven beats where we've just got one, off beat. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's that one missing beat. Now I've got this set up here. If I can work out quite which wire I want, with uh, a sequencer, which is set to a little seven-beat sequence within those eight beats, which should give us a sense of what's going on. we've got an eight beat bar but with just the seven notes coming through it and a gap a pause here between the E and the F. Now if we move this knob this top knob we can move that pause so 
so the pause now is coming between the A and the B. Or if we go a bit further, if we can find the right spot for this, I think we can get it to the point where the pause comes at the, t at the end of that little sequence. And similarly, if we use this bottom sequencer, if I don't lose the lead, we've got a little rhythm there going on, a little melody there, and we can move the start point. We can move the start point to make it a quite different melody depending on just where the start point is. Let's turn that one down a bit. Back to just our rhythms. We've talked about this knob setting our rhythm start point. This is our sequence length, so we can take that up a bit. Obviously, the longer sequences with more notes in them become quite interesting. You've got all sorts of different options going on there, and these two bottom knobs are setting the amount of control voltage going from here, control voltage for a sequence length, and control voltage here for the number of fills. So we're basically adding control, voltage control over these two knobs. I'm hoping that's making some sort of sense. We'll try and get that back to eight or so. 